Today I want to talk about bind groups. Modern graphics cards are limited in the number of resources which can be bound to them. This is particularly noticeable in binding heavy applications like ray tracing for instance where you've got a lot of different buffers bound. That lack of flexibility allows them to be a little more streamlined but I mean it's a problem. But wait a second if the resources that we bind are essentially ones and zeros, then surely there's some sort of abstraction that just lets us bind a smaller number of larger resources, right? Well, a lot of modern APIs have this in the form of bind groups. They're not always called bind groups, but they more or less do the same thing. So DirectX 12, Vulkan, Metal. Now Metal's a little bit of an anomaly because it's more flexible than those other ones. WebGPU, WGPU, everything. A lot of modern APIs have bind groups and this lets us get around it, right? So we just need to have up to eight bind groups, but then the bind groups themselves can have a whole bunch of different resources bound together. So this is one point in favor of bind groups. Another issue with bind groups is pipelines. So back in the day, we were running OpenGL and we were just binding everything on the fly and people were noticing that performance of OpenGL was not as good as it could be. And they were saying, hey, what can we do? What are the bottlenecks here? What can we do to improve performance? And at the time, there was a the theory that the dynamicness of the pipelines was affecting performance. Now, in recent years, some of the developments have been walking that back and going to a more dynamic model. But even though pipelines do not need to be locked down and static, having the bind group abstraction interface turns out it's a really elegant way of working. So how do these things actually work? Well, what we've got is we've got underlying objects like buffers and textures and things. We've then got bind groups. Then we've got bind group layouts and then pipelines. Now the idea is that these objects can be attached to bind groups. One object can be attached to multiple bind groups. It's totally fine. Bind groups have to conform to a given bind group layout. And multi again, multiple bind groups can conform to the same layout. You can have multiple layouts, which are essentially describing the same stuff. So you can have a bind group, which could potentially conform to a number of layouts and then pipelines have to be aware of the shape of the data that's going to come into them. So when we create a pipeline, we also specify one or more layouts or zero or more layouts really, which will be used with that pipeline. And these objects are roughly independent of each other. So we can create them independently and that leads to the most elegant usage. But anyway, Here's an example. So in a lot of my stuff, I will have um, a uniform buffer, like a struct that holds a view and projection matrix, two of them. And then I'll have a whole bunch like a storage buffer, a whole bunch of mat fours, which are all the transforms of every object in the world. And then usually I'll have a whole bunch of textures. And then for the bind groups, I try to group things according to how frequently they get used. So my view projection uniform buffer and my model transforms, they're just bound once at the beginning of rendering. They'll change for the next frame, but they're just bound once. So I usually sort of put them in their own bind group together. And then each texture is going to be more or less swapped out as we go. So each texture will get its own bind group. Okay, but for the layouts, the per frame bind group can have its own layout, no problem. And all of those per object bind groups, the textures, they have just a single layout that they adhere to. It says, hey, this is the general bind group. It has a texture and a sampler, that's it. So they can all use the same layout, that's fine. And then just for an example, let's say we have a basic shader, which just takes in the transform data and then we have a fancy shader which takes in the transform data and the texture and then finally we have a post-processing shader which doesn't need to know about any of the transform data it just needs the texture some texture so you can see we can match these combinations mix and match 
and get some pretty elegant objects. The last thing I want to talk about is the programming model. So I was saying that bind groups, although they can be a little intimidating, let's be honest, bind groups in Vulkan are massively intimidating. Well, I have found that the most elegant way to work with these things is with a builder class. So I'll have some sort of builder. It has some methods where I can specify resources, which will be added to whatever, whether it's a bind group builder or bind group layout builder or a pipeline builder. It's all pretty similar. And then I have some sort of method which actually builds and returns the object. And then internally, there's some amount of state which I want to be changed every time I make a new object. It can reset itself as well. So here's the example pseudo code that I've got here. Let's say we start with some builder. We can then go step by step, add resources in and then periodically build. And then every time we build, all that stuff gets reset. So then we can build the next thing. So that's it. My little layout of bind groups and things. I hope that this has made the topic a little clearer and I wish you all the best in your programming fun. And yeah, have a good one. Go out there, make some, make some games. Bye. Hi, so I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters. If you would like to support the channel, it's $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, but it's not expected. If you are not able or willing to support the channel financially, the best thing you can do is the usual. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what you're enjoying because I am trying to make the best educational content that I can under the constraints. So with that out of the way, Really big thank you to Antonin Karet, Dankil Foles, Declan, Andalon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Mathieu Derick, Moim, and Shreya. Thank you so much, my dudes. I really do appreciate it. It's fuel for the fire. Keep me going. Keep me motivated. Um, but yeah, have a great one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.